Hello and welcome to a series of mathematical tutorials in support of the Open University module TM111 Introduction to Computing and Information Technology. As a technologist we have to be comfortable with handling numbers in doing calculations with these numbers and then expressing our answers in a sensible format. So with these tutorials I really want to assist TM111 students with the mathematics of handling big and small numbers and presenting them in a meaningful way. What we're going to do is looking at rounding numbers. Sometimes we round up, sometimes we round down. Why do we round up numbers or round down numbers? Basically rounding is very useful to be able to make the number easy to describe and to understand and I might add the word make it more memorable as well. So, for instance, if I was to ask you the size of the hard disk on the computer you're sitting in front of, what answer would you have? Is it 500 gigabytes? Is it 300 gigabytes? And when you've got that value, do you think it's an exact number? Is it bigger or smaller than the number it's quoted? Here's a result of a, of a calculator calculation. 8,699,200. Again, you know, it's a number, it's a very big number, and in trying to convey it to somebody, I might round it up or I might want to round it down. Depending upon what I want to convey, it might be politically better to round it up or politically better to round it down. So I might say to somebody, this figure is about 8 million, or I might say it's 9 million, depending upon the circumstances. We round up on a daily basis. We almost do it automatically. So if I said to you, what is the time on the clock on the left? Most people would say it's 10 past 10 or nearly 10 past 10. The exact value of nine minutes past 10 sometimes doesn't have that extra value than saying to somebody it's nearly 10 past. If somebody asked me, what is the distance from Leicester to London? I would say it's 100 miles. In actual fact, it's 101.6 miles. But when I'm in casual conversation with somebody, 100 miles is about right, isn't it? It's more memorable than 101.6 miles. So how do we do this? Sometimes, as I say, we do it automatically in our lives without thinking. But sometimes we have to think a little bit more about what are we actually doing. So as an example, let's have a look at this. We're going to measure the height of a child. And by standing the child against the wall and measuring the on mark on the wall and putting a ruler next to it, I find out that the child is actually 91.2 centimetres tall. But I would actually say to somebody, oh, my child is 91 centimetres. That extra 0.2 doesn't really convey that much more information. The fact is that 91 is the important part. So what we've actually done, we've applied a strategy. We might be aware of it or not, but we have applied a strategy. So we measured the child at 91.2, but we, we quote, we say to people, the answer is 91. So what did we do? Can we analyse what we actually did? So what we did, in actual fact, was to say, look, 91, two numbers there, two significant numbers there are good enough in conversation with somebody to say how tall my child is. What I did, I took a deliberate act to say that the third number, the two, or well, after the decimal point, point two, the number two, was not significant enough to worry about. So what I did, I actually looked at that number and I applied the following strategy. I said, look, if this number is five or more, I would actually round the number up. It's not. It's two. So it's less than five. So I actually rounded the number sort of down. I went down to 91. So I quoted the answer of 91 centimetres. But if my child had been measured at 91.7, now I will apply the strategy again. And I might actually say, look, the seven is bigger than the five. And so therefore, on this occasion, I'm going to round up to 92 centimetres. Because in conveying this height of my child to somebody else, I've taken the decision that just two numbers, two significant numbers, are good enough to convey a meaningful answer to somebody whom I might be talking to. When I look at numbers, let's have a look at what we call the anatomy of a number. Here's a number, 735,623. When I look at this number, the number on the left, the seven, is what we call the most significant number. It means 700,000. So it's the most significant number. Whereas the number on the right, the three, is the least significant number. 
this is only three units in 700,000. So it's not carrying enough information. It's not carrying much information compared with the, the numbers to its, to its left. So what we do when we look at rounding up and rounding down to significant numbers, we always work from left to right. The most significant number on the left to the least significant number on the right. When we, be, when we deal with large numbers like we just have, the first whole number is the, what we call the first significant figure, then the second and third and the fourth, working from left to right. But when we come to look at decimal places, Sometimes there's a leading zero. Now, a zero, when it's a leading zero, it doesn't carry any significance. OK, it, it's a placeholder almost for my significant numbers, which are to the right. So if my decimal uh, places contain the leading zeros, I keep looking to the right until I find a number that is non-zero. In this case, I've found the two. And the two in this case is the first significant figure, and then the seven is the second, the one, the third, and the five, the fourth. OK, so I'm now going to consider zeros as leading zeros as having no significance. Sometimes we might have to add a zero on the end, just again to convey meaning to somebody that there isn't any further decimal places to consider. And we're going to look at this example in a moment when we consider these numbers here and just do the action of rounding up or rounding down on these numbers. So here's a number 36.9572 and I want to represent this to four significant figures. So let's apply the strategy. Four significant figures. The fourth one is the five. So I look at the next number and then apply the strategy. The next number is a seven and therefore the seven is bigger than five, so therefore I'm going to round this number up. So the five becomes a six, and my answer is 36.96. And because I've actually rounded the number up, I always put in brackets afterwards to the level of rounding. To this case, it's to four significant figures. Let's have a look at the decimal numbers here. Here's a lot of, lot of trailing or leading zeros here, <clears throat> three of them. But we apply the same strategy. We want this answer to be presented to one significant figure. So I, I move through those zeros. I hit the three. That's my first significant figure. I look beyond it to the next one. Is it five or more? No, it's not. So therefore, in this case, I'm not going to round up. I'm going to round down. So this I would quote the answer as being 0 0.003. And again, afterwards, I would put to one significant figure to show the level of rounding. Here's another big number, 5,604.63, and I want to present this to one significant figure. So again, the strategy, the first figure is the one I want to round to. Look at the second. Is it five or more? Yes, it is. So therefore, this will give me the answer of 6,000 to one significant figure. The five becomes a six, and the rest of the numbers are replaced by zeros. They're replaced by zeros. Would I add the decimal point in this case? No, I wouldn't, because it's a nice round figure, and sometimes those decimal places get a little bit confusing. But sometimes you might want to consider adding those decimal places. Now, the next, the last one here is to two significant figures. So remember, the zeros don't carry any value. They're not significant. So therefore, I'll hit the one. That's my first significant figure. Then I hit the nine. That's my second one. And I need to look at the third. Is it five or more? Yes, I'll round back. But this time when I round back, the nine becomes a ten. So therefore, I'll, ha I'll have to add another one to the uh, to the one there. And that becomes a two. But I want my answer to two significant figures. So therefore, in this case, I will add the extra zero on the end to show that basically these are the last two significant figures. OK, so in this case, the zero does have some value and some meaning. So if I'm rounding to a number of significant figures and the last ones as, as a zero, I need to add them to show the, the level of rounding. Finally, very important this, we do not use rounded numbers in any further calculations. We always use rounded numbers in presenting our answers, in communications to other people. 
If we have to use that number again in a further calculation, we must go back to its more exact value. Don't use rounded numbers in any further calculations. Well, there's a little bit more information on my website. Here it is, uh, O-U-T-M-1, uh, triple one, that stands for T1, Maths Help. Basically, it's a Google website. There's a lot of Maths Help on there, and I'm producing more tutorials to talk about the uh, mathematics required by TM111 in the support of passing this module. Good luck, everybody.